There was a well wind of change in the nation's aviation sector. We'll be looking at that and other critical issues on the show. Uh, this morning, uh, the President uh, Bola Tinubu made a clean sweep of all the chief executive officers of the agencies under the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace Development. And Nigeria has been facing a severe FX crisis, which has made it impossible for international carriers to repatriate accumulated funds from tickets sold in Naira. Many airlines have resorted to various methods to get the attention of the government, such as stopping ticket sales, and UAE's Emirate airline recently suspended all flights to Nigeria. The total global airline industry blocked funds have increased by 3.96% to 2.36 billion US dollars in September this year, from 2.27 billion dollars in April. Of these, 1.6 billion dollars is trapped in Africa, of which 48 which is $792 million, is trapped in Nigeria. I have joining me right now aviation editor of New Telegraph uh, newspapers, uh, Wale Shadari, uh, to discuss further on this. Good morning, Wale. Thank you for having me. It is indeed our pleasure. Let's just get straight to the point. What's going on with the aviation sector? Like I said, about uh, $792 million is trapped in Nigeria, and now there's a huge shake-up. Do you see all of this yes. coming, really, what's been happening in the past uh, yes, 48 yes, yes, hours? Yes, yes, yes. I, I saw it coming. I even think that the minister uh, tarried a while before uh, taking the decision to, uh, because um, if you look at it, most times when the new government comes in, uh, either the, uh, the cabinet, the government as it were, uh, decide or the minister decide to bring people he believes that uh, can work with him, uh, people that have the same synergy, the same energy uh, with him. And um, it's not anything on towards, it's uh, like they say, change is permanent. Uh, he has also looked at the sector and uh, felt that there's a need uh, to put the right people in the right places. I'm not saying the people that were removed were bad. Uh, some of them were good, some of them were fantastic. But like I said, uh, what, uh, what is the permanent thing in life is change. Mm. And I also believe that this reason for doing that after the stakeholders uh, uh, forum was for him to look at where he can bring in new people, new people with new drive, new people with um, um, ability to deliver the goods. The aviation industry in Nigeria has been very safe. Mm. The, Nigeria has one of the best safety records when it comes to aviation in the whole world. But like I said, we need a, we need new hands. We need people who can really take the sector to the next level. Okay, and maybe I, for one or two people that have been removed, that were removed, mm. I think that um, maybe maybe I'm not the minister, and the minister may have taken right. the decision based on the report before him. I think one of them should have been like the director general of the uh, 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 Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau, okay. that your lateral should have remained mm. uh, because of the exemplary things he has done, mm. and the director general of Nigerian Metrological Agency, Professor Matazo. Right. These guys have done fantastically well. But like I said, it depends on the report that is before the minister and his direction right. uh, towards, um, uh, you know, uh, moving the vision industry uh, forward. So there's mm. nothing new. It's within his power. It's within the power of the president to uh, mm. think out with um, the, the agency's head Leadership. and to bring in new drive, like I've said, All and right. to see where we can leverage on the um, uh, um, on the on the good things that we have done over the years. All right. All right, but, okay, fine. Since you said that it is not really untoward, and uh, so it is not like um, a surprise to you. But looking at all no, of this... It was a surprise. It was a surprise in the, in the sense that yeah. this is the first time we are seeing this type of a clean sweep. Mm. In the past, yes. you will see maybe two, three heads of the aviation agencies yes. were removed. Yeah. But this is the first time we are having a total clean sweep. But we just hope that this clean sweep um, will also bring the desired mm. result. But one other interesting uh, appointment he has made is mm. that of Nigeria Airspace Management Agency okay. uh, by bringing Lama. in uh, engineer Farouk Ahmed Uma. 
is mm. one of the best hands you can you can get around. All right, so uh, let's just talk more about the shake-up. You know, the president had said that the reason for this shake-up is to bring, um, uh, let me just quote, uh, world-class um, standard to the nation's civil aviation space uh, to ensure consumer protection, promotion, and well-being of passengers. But what are your expectations, really, Wale, from this uh, new crop of leadership? Yes, my expectation is that we'll begin to move. Yeah, the sector hasn't done badly, although we have some issues that gave us concern, uh, especially the regulatory body. Mm. I think the regulatory body, the NCA, had been the weakest link in mm. the chain of aviation safety in Nigeria. So it was a work on development that the DG of NCA was removed, particularly when it concerns graft. Uh, so my expectation is that we we'll continue to we we'll begin to see a new drive. We we'll begin to see things that we have not seen before in a way that the aviation industry uh, will improve. Mm -hmm. Yes, the aviation industry, like I say, has not done badly, but we need fresh blood. We need people who have the drive, uh, uh, people that as young as uh, Minister Keyamu, mm -hmm. that can really deliver the goods. All right. So I'm very, very confident that we're going to see a change because the minister has been pushing this sector the minister has been on top of this sector mm. yes somebody some people will say he has taken the function of the regulatory body but when you have a very weak regulatory body the the, the box stops on the minister's table in, in if anything happens mm. in the aviation industry and honestly nobody can fault the minister for the action he has taken so right. far the only concern I, I see there is that uh, the NSIB DG should have been allowed because he has done fantastically well. And I believe that reward for hard work is more work rather than remove me. Apart right. from that, mm. uh, the minister has done exceedingly well. Okay. And if you look at the if you look at the appointment, it goes across all the geopolitical uh, political zones of the country. It's not like in the past where you have is a, a certain um, um, a region dominating uh, the aviation industry. He cuts across and he has speak some of the best hands that he feels can help him to the verticals. All right. So, Wale, let's talk about um, the issue of um, trap fund, 792 million US dollars. You know, with, uh, you know, with all that is going on right now with the shakeup and all of that, do you actually foresee any change? And pre precisely, late September, President uh, Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu directed the CBN to create a platform for quarterly reconciliatory meetings with foreign airlines to address the backlog of trapped phones. And um, earlier last month, plans to clear FX backlogs were rolled out. Unfortunately, little progress has been made. What are your thoughts, really? I, I, I think I was in Geneva for the IATA event when this announcement was made. It was actually very, very embarrassing. I think that was last week or two weeks ago in Geneva when we had... Um, uh, a media global media day where Ayata came to tell us how the sector globally had uh, had uh, fared in the last uh, um, one year, and um, what also came out from that is that African airlines are going to make over 500 million naira losses in 2024. Mm. But let us put that aside. The issue of uh, traffic has been a recurring thing. Uh, in the for the past three four years and it's becoming very very embarrassing but uh, the minister of aviation mr keyamu has moved a step further to make sure that you know it's not within his power is between the cbn this money is trapped in cbn it has nothing to do with the minister um to even move ahead the minister had met with the central bank government met with the president to see how uh, some of these monies uh, could be released to the airlines. Uh, and that is the reason why we're having uh, high fares. If you compare the fares from Nigeria to maybe UK, for instance, is two, three times what you have in Ghana. And what the airlines have done, because they don't want their money to be stopped, uh, what they do is to close the lower inventory and open the highest inventory. So. In the past, where we used to have lower inventory, we do not have that because of what we have done. And honestly, I'm appealing to the federal government that we should look at ways 
to make sure that we defray this debt is becoming embarrassing. Anytime you go for international uh, uh, conference or conferences, um, Nigeria becomes the butt of joke in the international arena. We should sit down with the airlines, sit down with the IATA declaring body and see how we can resolve this amicably with them. In 2016, we had issues like this that made United Airlines to leave Nigeria, the US-based airline to leave Nigeria. Emirates has done the same thing. And the international airline is also threatening to leave the country. Mm. Nigerian airlines do not have the capacity to reciprocate or to, pri to provide the services these airlines are providing. If this airline decide to leave, which I see, which I find out that it will be practically impossible for all of them to leave. Mm. But at a point, if we do not do anything to resolve this matter, some of them will leave. And if some of them leave, we're going to have a big vacuum. Mm. Our airlines cannot feed this vacuum. So right. we're going to suffer for it. We're already suffering from our own action or inaction. True. Because if you're traveling to London, for instance, now, on the economy, is over 200,000, uh, 2 million naira or 3 mm. million naira. But if you go to Ghana, our 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 neighbors here, you can fly with 700,000, 800,000 naira. Right. Who is losing? Nigeria is losing. Nigeria is losing. They are moving their operations to other African countries. countries. And Ghana and Togo are trying to make their country hub of aviation. Mm. Nigeria should be the hub of aviation, not in Togo. Africa. Because mm. we have the population, we have the market, we have everything it takes to 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 make a vision better than what it is today. And that is why I know that the minister, the, the minister of vision is concerned about this. Okay. And he wouldn't want Nigerians then to be dragged in the mud. Mm -hmm. So we need to begin to look for ways to resolve this problem uh, uh, as quickly as possible. All right. Uh, uh, Nigeria is not the only country owing. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Ethiopia, we have other countries. But what Nigeria is owing is more than what five African countries yes, uh, it's a are, whole are lot. this airline. So we should begin to see 48%. how we can resolve this. And the airlines have also said, we know you, you may not be able to pay this money at a go mm -hmm. because of forest crisis. But if we can, if you begin to look for ways to settle, maybe in three months you give us 50 million. Mm -hmm. right. The next three months you give us 100 million. Within two years you will have you <laughs> <pay this. laughs> money. But All right. It's quite unfortunate where we have found ourselves. But I know the minister is not comfortable with what is happening, and I'm very, very All sure right, he's going to work towards it. All right, All right Wally. For sake of time, let's just talk about, uh, still on civil aviation, but specifically, let's just narrow it down. We've seen um, the situation with the international flight and the trap phones. But let's talk, uh, let's bring it back home. Let's talk about local travels now. You know, uh, average flights uh, during this period has picked uh, between about 150, 200K, uh, this season. I would have just said that uh, it was um, the issue of um, demand and supply Christmas and everything. But flight yeah, tickets yeah, have yeah. not been cheap, Wally, for quite some time now. What yeah, exactly yeah, is going on? And most people cannot even afford to go by road because of fear of kidnapping. What are we doing, really? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. You, you know, there are two things to this. Um, during the, the peak period, there are most we call peak period, especially December period. Yeah. But, to January period, that is where there's huge demand for air travel. Mm. Um, at that period, um, airlines make a lot of money. And because of demand that have outweighs supply, they tend to increase fares. Yeah. But let's even take it away from that. Um, air fares are very expensive in like not expensive, I put expensive, but if you really look at it, um, compared to the dollar rate, you find out that airfare is even less than $70 per an hour. Whereas in Europe, is um, more than $100, depending on the time you're buying your ticket. Mm. If you look at aviation, aviation is highly dollarized. Everything in aviation is dollarized. Honestly, I even wonder how the airlines have continued to remain in operation. Because if you want to uh, service your aircraft, you ferry this aircraft abroad and you cannot spend less than two, three million dollars to service one aircraft if you go for C check or D check. Mm. And $3 million is uh, more than 300, um, um, more than 300 million Naira, if mm. I'm correct. But at times, it even runs into several billions of billions, Naira for yes. you to do a check. 
And you also look at the aviation fuel, jet fuel, it's so expensive, but it has been stable in the yeah. last one year. Yes, now. for quite some time now. Yes. Yeah. We are 700 and 800. And if we have stability in the price of jet fuel, airlines can, can uh, plan, you know, they can even buy in bulk, at least there won't be vol volatility in the price of uh, yeah. uh, jet fuel. But you also look at other costs. You look at um, overhead, you look at cost of operation, you look at some other things that even happen. Uh, you look at best strike, and at times an airline can even be on the on the taxiway and um, mm. uh, is struck by a bed, one small bed like that. Yeah. And to change uh, 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 an engine of an aircraft can cost you almost $5 million or $6 million, depending on the type of aircraft it has damaged. So it is really, really expensive. But they say the airlines also need to watch it in the sense that mm. um, if you look at the propensity to fly by Nigerians, it's very, very low. Mm. How many people are really flying? It's the same group of people that are flying, businessmen, government officials. Uh, what is the uh, monthly income of an average Nigerian? Maybe 100,000 Naira. So mm. um, um, if care is not taken, the airlines, if they try to increase this rate beyond what it is, All right. um, people will shun air travel and go by road and damn the consequences. All right, well, so the airlines also need to be very careful. And that is why they always ask for government intervention. All right. But government cannot continue to pump money into private sector. If government does that, what about the granola seller? What about uh, I wonder. the pepper seller? In what way has government helped them? This is private business. Okay. So you have to cut your quota according to your side. All right, Wale, we have to uh, really Many go. airlines are going for... Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, there's a whole lot to say when we talk about aviation, local travel, Absolutely. and of course, issues of um, Nigeria's economy. You cannot even exhaust in just one show. But then again, Absolutely. we'll bring you some other time Absolutely. to share more insight. Uh, Wale Shadare is our aviation me. editor, New Telegraph newspaper. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadanyesi. See you again next time. Bye for now.